Well, I am super pleased today to be speaking to a multi-talented visual artist, Naledi Modubi. Welcome to Five Unscripted! Hi. Yay! <laughs> I can't do no small talk, no no small talk. I'm not with the small talk. Can't be with the small talk. Now, we are doing, going to have a chat, but we're also going to be doing something a bit more interactive. It's a bit of a challenge for me. I'm not an artist, but it's inspired by a social media challenge where we're going to swap canvases every five minutes. You're going to add to my piece. I'm going to add to yours. And we're just going to have a chit chat and it's going to be fun. Are you excited? I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm super ready. Okay. Since we are starting now on this particular front, uh, my first question has to do with social media and how you feel social media media has personally added to your career has it helped push it forward make your art more accessible but also other people's art in general um well firstly thank you for having me <laughs> i think social media for me has been before covid for before covid i was just an artist yes. i could create but i couldn't really understand or know what everyone else is doing yes. so it was only just a matter of what was accessible to me. And coming from a small town in the East Rand, it's like I wasn't really... In the scene. Yeah, I wasn't yeah. in the scene. I, I wasn't seeing enough arts. I didn't know what was happening. And mm. then social media comes in and you learn more Who, art. You yeah, learn, you see... What. Yeah, and you see what you can do. So that's how it impacted or inspired my work. And it also helped me reach a lot of people. Like mm. my art grew so much in a very short space because of social media. Yes. It got to places where I haven't even been. Sure. My art is currently living in homes worldwide yeah. because of social media. So for me, I think it's a great platform to just get out there and be seen and see and expose yourself to a lot as well as learn a lot if yeah. you allow yourself to. Yeah. You know, I think also like the the art space is such a broad one. It's so beautiful. You get to like come across people that sculpt. You come across people that paint and draw different things as well, not just with pencil or charcoal, but with different materials. I think the uh, recyclable material space is also growing quite big in the art scene. Uh, I guess with you, uh, you're also very much into digital art. How are you seeing that particular type of art grow and progress, particularly in Joburg, maybe even around the world? Mm -hmm. um, I do think that there's a whole stigma around digital art that it isn't necessarily art. real art. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like my role as a young artist is to make it real art. I oh. think I want to actually show that there's a lot of thinking, there's a lot of skill that also goes into it. There's also just technical knowledge that you have to invest in mm. or get to know. So that's something that someone who's painting on paper isn't necessarily exposed to. I mean, they also have other stuff to yes. know. But yeah, I think it's very necessary. It, it also opens up a world of a lot of tools and mediums mm. and stuff for people who can't access, access that, for them, example. Yeah. It's like one purchase and you can literally create anything and it should be a thing. Yes, it yeah. should be like a bigger thing, especially with like the AI advancements that yeah. we're seeing around the world now. Speaking of the Joburg art scene, I mean, how has it been just kind of planting your feet post-COVID? How are you finding that more people are interested in art and more people coming to art exhibitions, purchasing art? Because as someone who's just fresh out of, you know, uni, I never used to think of buying art as a necessity. And so you don't go places and say, oh, I'm going to come back with a really cool art piece. Or you, you might think it's a bit too expensive. But in the same time, you're also taking so many hours of your day, yeah. so much time out of your life to create this art piece so someone can enjoy it. Are you finding that consumers are coming forward and enjoying art more, especially post-COVID? I think they are. I mm -hmm. think we're having more younger, a younger audience for art yes. so like like you said you're more interested this is obviously because of social media i'd assume mm -hmm. during covid yes and yeah i think there's a lot more people interested in purchasing art and i think that's also where i feel like my art comes in is i do create work that is accessible my whole point of what i do is to create work that lives in everyday lives because mm. it's meant to reach young girls i can't be making my work extremely expensive, expensive if it's yeah. not speaking to who it's supposed to or else it's going to be 
someone else. Yeah, <laughs> it's not yeah. going to do what it's meant to do. So I do think that it's opened up. COVID has opened up a space mm. for arts that is not necessarily extremely expensive to exist and still be valuable in and many fun, other ways. Yeah. yeah. And more people are more have the appetite to learn more about art now. Yeah. 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 I think we've become more cultured. Ooh. Yeah. And more interested in uplifting ourselves and investing in our interests and and and. Yeah. So that's where art opens up. Yeah. You know, I think it's a crazy thing how something like COVID could be a catalyst for such positive growth in art spaces, you know, whether it is, of course, like photography or it is in painting, whatever kind of art form that someone is exploring, COVID did kind of accelerate that. But you speak about making your art accessible to young girls. Black femininity is one of the greater themes in your artworks. And I think you also link that to the women that raised you and why that's so important. Now, coincidentally or very well planned. Today happens to be International Women's Day when we're recording this. So can you speak to us a little bit about that thought process of making that choice to, you know, make your work strongly and openly feminine and why your your female uh, influences are so big and present in your work? It is... um influenced and inspired by the woman who raised me it's not meant to speak more than what it is it's just meant to be representing black women black girls in a way that we don't usually see Mm. and this is almost showing the diversity of womanhood actually just womanhood because you find that we're often stereotyped to be a certain certain exactly so I think it's just showing how wide we can be i love the whole narrative of being strong and bold and 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 i definitely like to Mm -hmm. be represented like that but there's a lot of people around me that i've experienced who've shown strength in a very soft way in a very so i think that's ultimately what my work is meant to do to almost show you that that too is beautiful that too is womanhood and it's celebrated and 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 And, yeah, what was the question? (laughs) (laughs) No, I was just asking about, you know, your influences. You answered it. Okay. So that's perfectly beautiful. And I want to elaborate a bit more on that in a sense that as a South African girl, I feel like we're very much tied to the concept of being in Mm Bogoto. So you did touch on that already and how we see strength as something that is a bit more masculine. But the beauty in finding strength in those soft moments is also what makes a woman a woman. Yeah. So when... When it comes to, you know, our Africanness as well, do you think it's harder to translate that in your work? Like it's it's harder to show people that it's not just the Imbogoto that's, you know, a strong woman. Like how does the, the soft feminine come across? I think for me, it's not that hard. Mm. I think what is hard is how people, well, I don't know how people actually receive it. I don't mm. know if it's difficult for someone who's looking at my art to grasp that. But yes. for someone who was raised by literally women, I have no male figures, figures directly to me. So I don't have any other idea of what a woman is meant to be. I don't know yes. if she's meant to be superior. I don't know if a man's meant to be the provider. For me, they've played every, every role. role. So it's very easy for me to talk, to represent women in any way because I've seen it and I know it. So I don't know any other way that isn't meant to be. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think it's that difficult, but I'm I assume it might be difficult for people to receive that if you've been in you a space a exactly way. if you've been in a space where this is how a woman is meant to be and now suddenly she's being represented That's in a taboo else. way. Then mm. it's it I think it brings out questions or it makes you think or feel differently, which is what art is meant to do. Yeah. If, if it's not inspiring or maybe if you're not relating, <laughs> then it should change your perception of yeah, something. On something. Yeah. That is very true. That's powerful. Like I think art also speaks to us in like different ways. Sometimes you see it and you see one thing, but then you see it after a couple of years and it inspires completely different feelings. It evokes different feelings yeah. altogether. And um, while my next question definitely has to do with the fact that it's a huge conversation, I think, not just in art, but in academia, that, you know, there's the concept of decolonizing education, the production of knowledge, and also meaning the production of art, since it is such a significant part of knowledge production, and of course, the preservation of our culture. 
Do you think you are seeing that change translate in modern art today? Like, are we seeing more people be less, you know, rigid about art forms? Are people exploring more? Are you exploring more? Do you feel that you your work is speaking to that conversation as well? I do think so. Mm. I think, I hope I answer your question. But I'll just... <laughs> no, this is this is like one yeah. of those things where you're like, I'm doing eight different things in my mind. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm, I took one part and my house, like, yes. I'm going with that part. But I think with me, I am in a position right now where I want to create my own blueprint of what an artist can be. Yes. So I think that with the time and how things have evolved. We are having more females in this space. Yes. But one thing we're not having is different spaces where we can exist. It's almost like we're all mm. grouped into one. So with that being said, I think I want to create like my own little thing, like yeah. my own little way where um, I'm educating and I'm helping whatever knowledge you have around whatever. Mm-hmm. But in a space that not, that in a space that's not traditional. Yes, it's yeah, still so breaking boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I think I answered. What was your question? Yes, you did. You <laughs> did. Definitely you did because that question is quite, it's quite packed. It's yeah. quite layered. You can't just go out and say, yes, my work does, you know, add to the conversation of decolonizing art. But in wanting to be different, in wanting to, I think, set your own pace, for your own audiences, it definitely does contribute to yeah. that conversation. I think I think it does in a way that it's it's now existing in places where people don't expect arts to live, in yeah. places that would make um art enthusiasts probably upset. Like yeah. it's it's living on water bottles. Like now you get campaigns that are literally having art. So there's different ways to now communicate that in a way that's more accessible to more people and mm. literally anyone and everyone. It's no longer specific yeah Yeah. or yeah it's literally now open to everyone so it is existing differently it is creating a new definition of what art is okay before we get into my next question are you ready to stop the swap sure yours is looking like a really beautiful portrait like i see that eye the lash is (laughs) lashing or first and foremost oh yeah your reveal yes Nice. I really love the way it's looking. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm gonna work. You can do. I'm gonna make you anything. a border. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> this is where I'm at. We've just got a bunch of random circles. Some of them not so perfect. But I heard if you can I do love a perfect the colors. Thank you. I'm trying to. I'm going for the clown vibe. What's your favorite color? Um, t- uh, turquoise. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so I started with like the blue vibes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so my next question has to do with art that you've done before. Um, so before we get into some of your current showings, I'd like for us to speak just a little bit about, you know, showing your work abroad, that journey. Um, you know, you've shown your work in Bali, in London, in Chicago, like your work has been all over the world. And like you said, your work is traveling the world and it's occupying rooms and spaces that sometimes you haven't even been Mm -hmm. in. So what has that experience been like and how did you get started? That experience has been, hmm, it's been exciting. It's been interesting it's been eye opening. Mm-hmm. Those are the words I'd use. But it's also been extremely confusing because it's like I'm both. I think I would like to assume I'm, I am an emerging artist. So it's been confusing yes. to be one, but like certain places view my work as something else. Maybe like I've showed alongside extremely amazing artists, like artists I've learned about in my textbooks. Mm-hmm. So that's been interesting and once again it comes back to social media i feel like digital spaces have truly shed taken my work to different people like a lot of people have seen them and have seen that it deserves to live side by side other people who are extremely amazing so what has what was the question the question definitely was answered as well okay (laughs) um just the experience of showing your work abroad you mentioned you know being showed alongside people you've studied about as well and that kind of experience do you ever suffer from imposter syndrome 
I do. Yeah. And it's been something that, like, literally right now, I'm mm-hmm. going through the whole idea that I'm on my own journey. Yes. So I've had a lot of situations where I feel like I'm not good enough. and, and, and But then I have to remind myself that what I'm doing is something that I... I didn't see anyone do it. Am I allowed to True. speak the neck? Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So like I literally just created, I shared what I did. So there's no right or wrong way. So yeah. I can't constantly compare Look myself back. with anyone. Yeah. I, I would think it would be very unfair for anyone else to do the same with me. So I have mm. to just constantly remind myself that I'm on my own little path and whatever comes from it is mine and I'll own it for what it is. It can't be bigger or smaller. Yes. Because of someone else or yeah. society or anything. So I think my imposter definitely lives, my imposter syndrome yes. lives from what I think other people think of me oh, and my yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think as an artist, you know, it's very much this is a part of me. Look at it, judge it, critique it. You know, some people, it's their whole career to critique art. Yeah. And whether it's in writing it in an article, nowadays, everyone that has a phone can be a critique and say, actually, yeah. this is my opinion about something. Yeah. Um, how would you advise, you know, the young artists watching this right now thinking, I can't start. Like, how am I going to start selling my work? People are going to judge me. They'll think I'm maybe overpricing my work. At that time, it took you more than 12 hours to complete an art piece. Mm. So what would you say to that young person who's still kind of doubting that they can get out there, get Mm -hmm. their work out there and be seen and appreciated by people? I think just always create and share it but make it fun like mm. don't don't rush to make it all about selling don't rush about i think all the pricing and all the help you you know everything yes. that comes with it it comes naturally don't don't force it because i feel like we can also feel when someone is Forcing. pushing stuff onto yeah. us so it's yeah. not it doesn't become truly organic so definitely just like create share your work have fun with it like enjoy the the journey enjoy the experience enjoy whatever comes from it sometimes you'll create and no one will say anything and that's okay it doesn't mean (laughs) anything also it doesn't mean it sucks it's your journey it's your work Mm. yeah it shouldn't be validated by anyone else but if it is that's amazing because then it works to what you're trying to do yes but until then, make it your thing. Make it a personal thing. Yeah. When did you start feeling like an artist? Is this something you felt from when you were young, when you were in school? Were you one of those people that doodled? You had an art book? You had art classes? When did you actually say, no, you know what? I'm an artist. I'm not just, you know, playing around. Yeah. Yes, playing around is part of exactly what art is about. But when did you start saying, you know what? This is who I am. This is what I want to do. I won't be a teacher. I won't be a lawyer right now. I want to be an artist I actually thought I'd be a teacher I've always <laughs> wanted to be a teacher I still probably want to be a you teacher you should I think you're, you'd be a great teacher yeah, um, yeah. Um, I've always enjoyed drawing I've always been the artist of my grade 2 class or nice. grade 3 class I was the one who was drawing little flowers for everyone so I have always it's always been a part of my identity that's how I've always identified as mm. as the one who draws so even throughout my school career, it's always been a part of me. I really never thought I'd be an artist. I, like, I never imagined this to be me right now. Yes. So it was always either being a teacher or an accountant. I don't know, but not an <laughs> artist. And once again, that speaks to the fact that it's, it's something I've never seen. Like I never thought it would be a thing because mm. I never saw people do, do it, it, especially yeah. people that look like me. Exactly. So it took a lot for me to say this is who I am and this is what I'm going to do. Mm. And it had to be a personal decision, not even something that I saw somewhere because yeah. I couldn't see it anywhere else. And it just happened. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I still do have moments where I can't say I'm a visual artist because there's a lot of things that come with that. Yes. But yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm so still... glad. You know, I feel like it's such a, a process, not just accepting yourself as an artist, but accepting the fact that you have to get out there and hope that other people also feel the same yeah. when they see your work, when you make yourself vulnerable in front of them and so on. So yeah. now I want to talk about what you're currently showing just before we, we wrap up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> 15 minutes is not realistic to create art piece. I'm just going to put isn't. that out there. But I think uh, we did well. I, think I feel we like I well, ruined yeah. your circles. No, no, but no, it's no. Fine. You did not ruin my circles. Okay. okay. <laughs> I promise you, you didn't. They had no direction. Okay. You gave them At purpose. Least. Yeah. <laughs> but your current works, you know, um, The Falling Crown is expected to be showing this year in California, darling. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing Boundless in Johannesburg this year as well. Talk to us about the stories behind those two projects and kind of what you've been putting into them, what the work has been like to get those pieces where they are today. Okay, so with the Boundless exhibition, uh, I'm showing two pieces alongside a lot of amazing female artists. Mm. Um, And those two pieces are a piece of my granny and my sister who are extremely soft, quiet, black woman and you see it in like the arts it's just a beautiful black figure that is so strong and how it's represented but the actual nature of the person is actually not that i don't know how to explain it i'm getting vibes yeah yeah (laughs) so the whole point of that once again was to just show the people that are in my life and that have shown themselves in ways that are not expected and it's just always so beautiful to grasp yes yeah to to get that energy and with the fallen crown that is an artwork that i created two three years ago Mm. that is meant to make a comment on climate change but how it impacts black hair actually Ooh, that is giving yeah are we gonna see that exhibition in ghp or do i have to go all the way to california you have to go all the way (laughs) I mean, it's it's such yeah. a great, you know, topic to touch on. I never even would have thought the two would be linked. Yeah. You know, I, I think we think about uh, the weather kind of aff- affects your hair when it's hot. So it becomes mm-hmm. a bit more fuzzy. fuzzy um, and when it's cold, maybe it's a little more straight, depending on your hair type, of course. But I never thought to link our um, hair with climate change. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And hair is like taking it a step further. Even skin, the two different skins. Oh, yes. There's a whole topic yes. around that. So that also could have been a thing. It probably will be a thing at, at some, some point. point. Yeah. yeah. You speak about how you did this for three years. You've been no, working no, no, on that not piece. For three years. You started it, it three years, three years ago. ago. Yeah. And how long did it take? It could have taken like three four months wow yeah. that's still a lot of time it is and why did you decide to keep it with you for so long were you waiting for the right moment what made you decide that now it's time for the world to see it i think i was waiting for the right setting for that artwork so yes. the whole this exhibition is an installation and in literally like an art kiosk wow. and it 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 like rotates it and around, it yeah. turns on at night so anyone work walking around around gets to experience the whole thing like you see the hair grow and fall off and it's a yeah i don't think it would have done it justice to have it live on a wall true and, story yeah. it needed to move it needed yeah. to be and i never thought i would i mean i thought maybe i would show it one day when i have my own money to make it yes, happen but yes. luckily something did come up that fit yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to do a last question so we can see what our final pieces are looking like. Okay. <laughs> I'm so nervous. But uh, my final question is basically around your future plans. Like, are we going to see a Morupi gallery anytime soon? Are we going to... I mean, and soon doesn't have to be this year or next year or in three years' time. Like, yeah. just in the foreseeable future, like mm-hmm. in the decade. Mm-hmm. Are okay. we about to see something big? Yeah, from you now, lady. What's the vibes? Not anytime soon, mm-hmm. but I do have a lot of like things I'd like to create. I think I want my art to exist for other people. Like I want to create spaces for other people to just go do the most. I don't think I think I have a limit to what I can do, but I want to create spaces where people can take that and just run with it. Yeah, so maybe. Maybe like a little school or something for small girls. Yeah. Not small, small, like teachable girls. Teachable girls. (laughs) (laughs) When they're two, they're really not teachable. No. They want to lie. They do their own things. So yeah, almost like (laughs) imprinting the idea that you can be an artist, you Mm. can sell your work from a very young age and have fun with it. Like make it a thing. 
We learn yeah. about yeah, we learn. And you're very passionate about passing, you know, art knowledge on yeah. from generation to generation. So yeah. I guess that's part of it. Yeah. Well, before I say here's the art, I think it's time to rip off some of this tape. These okay, are let me just do one it. last okay. thing. So there's something <laughs> that's fine. to fine. Uh, Let's do green. This eye is actually very amazing. I can't wait. I love the background. <laughs> <laughs> the border. The border. You know, yeah. it, was, it was giving something. Hmm. <laughs> okay. The big reveal is coming. Also, I don't think I could ever survive doing the work that you do. Because I don't keep my nails like a normal length. Yeah. So I'm like super conscious about I can't get paint on my nails. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. But you can wash it off. I can't do what you do. I'm super. <laughs> I can't speak, guys. I get that. Yeah. Oh, I don't it's know. okay. It's okay. Yeah. I'm actually proud of this border. I also like it. <laughs> okay. That, let's make you hold your own so that people <sighs> can see that you did this beautiful. Ah. This is me. Hee <laughs> This is what we've got. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Naledi, for speaking yes. to us. And yeah, make sure you check her out on socials. She's an incredible illustrator, photographer, just all round visual artist. And I've had a blast. Stay tuned to Five Unscripted. This is Five FM.